Welcome to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm pleased to speak to you from New York City on this, the 21st day of May, 2019. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I am the author of a newsletter called Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks, and you can sub- subscribe to that by going to miningstocks.com, miningstocks.com, or call our office here in New York during normal work hours, 718 718- 457-1426, 718-457-1426. Always like to put in a plug for my friend Chen Lin. Uh, ChenPicks.com is where you need to go to purchase his newsletter, What is Chen Buying, What is Chen Selling? And, of course, we always like to put in a plug for Michael Oliver, OliverMSA.com. He'll be with us in just a few seconds from now. Uh, I do want to thank all of you for listening, making this one of the more popular shows in the Voice America Business Channel. And I'd like to invite you to continue sending along your questions and comments. Uh, whatever you have to say about this show, send them on to questions for Taylor at gmail.com. Questions, the number four, Taylor at gmail.com. And we do want to thank our sponsors because without them, we, there would be no show. They make it economically viable. Merrimont Resources, Great Bear Resources, Klondike Gold, Novo Resources, RN Resources, and Strike Point Gold are the sponsors for today's show. I've titled today's show, An Inevitable Debt Bubble Apocalypse, Why, When, and What's the Solution? Keith Weiner, Peter Talman, and Michael Oliver are returned guests this week. Well, Keith Weiner says that interest rates are inevitably heading lower. Otherwise, interest, rate, interest expense will quickly spiral out of control. He believes deflationary credit implosion will hit the U.S., uh, be, that the U.S. will be the last, co- the last country to really get hit by this deflationary implosion, meaning that the U.S. dollar and the U.S. will be the last, uh, the U.S. dollar will be the last fiat currency standing. So I plan to ask Keith to review the mechanism for why he believes that declining interest rates are inevitable. I'm not sure that Michael Oliver, who we'll be talking to in a few minutes, uh, necessarily agrees with that. Uh, but uh, what? We'll ask him anyway. We'll ask Keith to explain that. But more importantly, what I want to get from Keith today is uh, what the monetary metals company is providing. They're providing a yield. You know, it's long been said that the reason you don't want to own gold is because it doesn't provide any yield. Well, of course, what they forget to tell you is that the dollar has lost 90, I don't know, 97% of its value since 1913, and gold has kept its value. Uh, They never tell you that. But anyway, Monetary Metals has come along uh, and provided a product that you can lease your gold, your physical gold, and get as much as you're going to get on U.S. Treasuries for short-term uh, duration, a, a year or less. So uh, we'll ask Keith to explain that to us when he comes on in the second half of today's show. Peter Talman of Gold uh, Klondike Gold will be with me after the first commercial break, and that is really an exciting story, I believe, uh, if you follow the exploration companies. Because what uh, Peter Talman and his crew have discovered, at least they believe they have discovered, are the structural controls for the high-grade gold. Now, we've had a lot of disseminated gold, which is good from an economic perspective. Many times, if you have the high-grade veins and there's low grades surrounding those high-grade veins, it can be very important for the economics of a project. But it seems as though now Klondike, after two or three years of exploration, have finally figured out where the high-grade stuff is. So Peter will be along to talk to us. During uh, the, after the first commercial break about Klondike Gold. And uh, right now we have Michael Oliver with us to talk about uh, the markets. Thanks for joining me again, Michael. Hi, Jay. Good to be back. Always good to be back. You know, every day we are given reasons uh, by the mainstream media why movements, for the movements in the stock market and all markets, you know, somebody talking heads have to have some story to tell. Uh, today's stocks are heading higher, supposedly because early uh, because Mr. Trump apparently has given some sort of a reprieve uh, in, in terms of its uh, in terms of tariffs. Um, but uh, I know that you don't really pay too much attention to the to the reasons given. You just like to look at the uh, at the at the um, can, at the collective wisdom of the markets, and as you see it, and as you work with your momentum and structural uh, structural. Uh, tools that you use. So what are you seeing now with respect to the equity market, the S&P 500, for example? Well, uh, on the S&P, we called a downturn at 29.10 uh, two weeks ago when it came down from its third new high, 29.50, uh, you know, last, uh, earlier this month. And we thought the drop would probably uncover support for the time being in the low 2800s 
And sure enough, they got, they got it down to the minuscule of the low 2800s, 2801. Uh-huh. They didn't want to print that 2800 tick. It'd be three 50-point down ticks, and that would disturb them. And so we've been fighting, and we argued in a report that uh, when we got down to the low t- uh, 2800s on the S&P that the bulls not only better buy it here, but they better keep it north. They better not just uh-huh. rally and hover, because if they hover through the end of the month, which is only a week and a half away, and you find yourself here in the mid-2800s or even higher 2800s, but not back at the highs, you're going to inherit some numbers that come hit you in the face in June that could take you right back down again, uh, specifically some of the averages that they stopped in front of this month at the lows or stopped around. Those averages are moving up in June, and when you open the next month, uh, you better not be hovering where you are right now. I mean, you can flex your muscles all you want, but this is not a good place to be if you're long the S&P starting in June. Similarly, gold did the same thing opposite, almost on the same day. The mm-hmm. S- gold rallied up to its three-month average uh, on when it hit 1304 area early uh, last week, I think it was. Uh, and that's about the same time coincident with the S&P hitting its low for the month. So I think it's not coincidental that they're trading inverse, not day-to-day, but more or less week-to-week. And I think June could uh, take gold right back up again. Right now, gold is, is the funny thing. Gold is the weak element in the complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's acting weaker than silver. It's, it's certainly acting weaker than the, the gold mining uh, ETFs like GDX. Uh, they have a different tone about them. Silver and uh, now silver's been whacked some lately, but not comparable to gold quite. Uh, and uh, gold is pulled back to a price chart level that probably is exciting the bears. Mm-hmm. Specifically, <laughs> if you just look at June contract, it hit 1270 now three times from above. Normally, uh-huh. on a if you keep price charts and you're only a price chart watcher, when you come down to a triple bottom, it doesn't usually hold. Uh-huh. It's a strong suspicion you're going to ventilate on the downside. The problem is that when we look at silver and we look at GDX, they look momentum ripe to continue to turn up here, and probably with some violence if they cross certain levels, which aren't all that far above where we are now next week. Gold, meanwhile, looks like it's trying to have a tantrum, and they hit 1270 today, actually traded the 1269, and they didn't get any follow-through, you know, like a 1265 or 1260, a flush out, which we opened as a, as a possibility that they could do that. But we don't see sustainability. When we look at our momentum work, which is daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, we don't see the justification for this price weakness being sustainable or anything more than a little tantrum that spikes below recent lows and then hooks back up. So the issue now is, will the price guys manage to blow that triple bottom at 1270 and get some you know, more $5 down ticks or not? Mm-hmm. And it's interesting today that they hit it and they, they uptick some. <laughs> they, didn't go, they didn't go whoosh like we kind of suspected. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we were very pleased with the tone we see in GDX lately. It, it indicates, and I can't, you can't prove this, I don't know who's the bid and the asks are, but uh, mm-hmm. there's a firm tone under the market. I have a sense that institutional money is moving into the gold mining sector. And I don't mean gold bug money, but I'm talking about large funds around the world that are right. allocating to different categories. And mm-hmm. one of those categories is uh, gold miners. Mm-hmm. Well, it certainly must be a little a little bit disconcerting to the bears that they couldn't break through to the downside on at twelve seventy. Yeah, give them a couple of days, but you know, and even if they do, we we still assess that it will be a spike. It won't be a sustainable move. It'll be a uh, you know probably a rapid spike. You know, you make the low and it turn right back up, and then you're mm-hmm. like, oh, so what? Uh, mm-hmm. Or they simply don't get it. And I'll tell you this: if they uptick to twelve eighty five. Mm-hmm. It's a fifteen dollar, three five dollar upticks. You're not going through that low, mm-hmm. so the bears got the onus is on them. They better push out that twelve seventy and get down in the twelve sixties quickly. If they don't, uh, this is just a it's just a flat floor down here. Do you think the bears should be paying some attention to the fact that the uh, shares are strong and silver is strong? I mean, might that not well, be something they would be concerned yeah. about? I don't. I think they should, uh, and we've noticed it a week ago, and, and it continues a little bit surprising uh, uh, into this week, even with gold dropping another ten dollars from last week, uh, mm-hmm. and, and yet GDX still is holding rather tough. Uh, it just it just indicates to us that something new is going on here. It used to be if gold dropped five dollars, GDX would uh, you know drop two <laughs> percent, yeah. and wow. and now we're not getting that kind of action, and it's more persistent. It's not just one day. It's now a pattern over the last week or two. And well, I, it, it could indicates be. to me that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 
No, I was just going to say it could be that if uh, if we're starting a new bull market and it's a real honest to goodness bull market, we might see the shares or silver leading the bullion, the gold bullion, right? Yeah, well, the, the silver has definitely underperformed gold. You know, we know yeah, that for the last couple sure. of years. It's come back and retested its lows, held them, and so forth, the, the 1350 area, whatever. Uh, but um, we've got some numbers. I would say this, you get up in the mid-1450s uh, next week, which is, say, about a dime above this week's high. And I think you're going to see some uh, upside action, uh, sharp mm-hmm. upside action. So it doesn't take much in terms of upticks to get silver out of this hole, and, and not just out of the hole, but moving quickly. Because we've got mm-hmm. some momentum structures overhead that just, just indicate ripeness for turn and with some power. And, uh, and, and gold, meanwhile, is trying to scare us the other way. But it's mainly a price chart-based scare, not a momentum-validated yeah. downside. Right, exactly. And your chart, certainly on the GDX, was just crystal clear last weekend that you put out. Really helped to show to make that point that, uh, at least in the GDX and the shares, uh, there's some real strength there, it seems. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you wouldn't necessarily see that on looking at a price chart, but it, it really looked good from your yeah. uh, momentum. And the tone is definitely different. So it, I just I suspect that institutions are moving some money around. They're moving out of the nervous equity markets into oh. a sector that, you know, a gun lock, for exa- example, I think has argued mm-hmm. the case that it's probably the best place to be on the planet right now is in the gold mining shares. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Well, that's... Yeah. Well, it, it certainly uh, we've you know we've been ba- we've, we've been building a base for a number of years here. We've gone nowhere, and uh, I think I've always believed that in order to get the gold shares and the gold bullion market to move up, you got to start to see some new money coming into those sectors. And I could very well be that that's starting to happen. Michael, I want to thank mm-hmm. you so much for spending your time with us again. It's always refreshing to hear from you, uh, and we'll look to talk to you again next week, hopefully. Thank you, dear. 